Welcome to DOS Days, a nostalgic look back at PC gaming from the mid 80s to mid 90s. This is a companion piece series to Player One Memories which covers the arcade scene during this same period. For this series I'll be jumping back and looking at all those great DOS era and early CD-ROM titles that I played and loved so much, as well as the times and places I experienced them. So let's jump on back to 1997 saw the release of one of the worst comic book movies put to film in the form of Batman and Robin, a ham-fisted attempt to mash Batman 66's campiness with a Tim Burton movie and some of the seriously most abysmal casting in movie history. It's an absolute cringe fest. Still though, more entertaining than any of the Chris of Nolan attempts. And on the gaming front, the PS1 gave me one of its all-time best games, Parappa the Rapper, igniting the home video game music genre, as well as giving us all sorts of words of wisdom. And over on the real music front, Puff Daddy and Mace released Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, a laughable attempt at a mashup of one of my favorite 80s songs by Matthew Wilder, which has one of the most tone-deaf butcherings of a classic music hook I've ever heard. If you know the original, this will cause you to seriously consider suicide. And on the subject of murder, let's flip over to today's game, the 1997 release of The Last Express, published by Broderbund on Windows and DOS. A game whose genre was at its peak the classic point and click adventure style, mixed in with a murder mystery akin to the colonel's bequest or killed until dead. The game was headed up by writer and designer Jordan Mechner of Prince of Persia and Karateka fame, who formed and built an entire studio, Smoking Car Productions, in 1993 in San Francisco to make this one game their only release. The game mixed in multiple genres, with the base being a point and click style, with real time elements, puzzles, and light action sequences. It tries to do a lot and for the most part it's very successful. The story has your character, an American on the run from the police for a suspected murder in 1914 at the break of World War I. You're escaping Paris by boarding the Orient Express, a real life train that made its way through Europe at the time, and plan to meet your friend on board. The train runs from Paris to Constantinople, with that being the allotted time you have to complete the game. But once on board, however, you discover your friend dead in this compartment, and thus the mystery is set in motion. I mean, we wanted this to be a, you know, an exciting, romantic, adventurous, nostalgic spy story. To say this game is unique is an understatement. It employs a very, almost minimalistic point and click style that even if you never played one of these styles of games, it'll be very easy for you to get into and play. But one of its most unique ideas is the fact that it takes place in real time, which is generally unlike most games in the genre. What this means is characters and events are all happening all the time, and you can miss events or you can steer plots in completely different directions by simply being at the right place at the right time. It's, it's being scripted as the player plays it, you know, and I think it, to take the game home and play it, you know, you're going to see things, combinations that, that we never saw here and never planned. Usually this kind of thing wouldn't appeal to me, but this game implements these sequences so effectively, it truly not only feels like a new game every time you restart it, but everything feels very natural. Gameplay involves talking to the 30 plus characters who are all very interesting and fleshed out extremely well, solving logical puzzles and getting into the occasional action sequence, which is the only weak part of the game, but it doesn't bring it down by any means. Being stuck on a train confines the action and story just like any good old murder mystery book, for example Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express, which this is clearly taking some inspiration from. But it does help focus the plot as you get used to the layout of the train. Your initial game will be an absolute disaster. I remember playing it back in the day and taking forever just to find my compartment to start the game. It may be slightly annoying at first, but learning the layout of the train quickly becomes second nature, and therefore the game gets a lot better from then on. The graphic style is absolutely amazing, combining rotoscoping techniques 
that Jordan mastered on Prince of Persia as well as still photography to make up its unique look which mimics paintings from this era of history. Part of the inspiration was the Art Nouveau style that was in vogue in 1914. If you look at the paintings of Toulouse-Lautrec, Alphonse Mucha and uh, much of the poster art of the time, this was really the forerunner of the modern comic book. Music as well has that full rich cinematic feel which makes it feel like you're watching an old 1930s style murder mystery movie. The game was eventually released by Broderbund in 1997 after almost five years of production to a resounding thud at least sales wise. The timing for the game couldn't possibly be any worse. Broderbund's entire marketing team just quit weeks before the game's release leaving almost no advertising for the game being made. And on top of that, Broderbund themselves got bought out by the learning company at the exact same time, leaving Last Express as the last game to scrape out the door as Broderbund folded. This game was never reprinted and only managed to sell 100,000 units before going out of print, with its reported budget being between 5 and 6 million dollars. This effectively ended smoking car productions as well, and in a sense kicking off the end of the classic point and click adventure style genre commercially for many years to come. It's a real shame it garnered some really great reviews in almost every publication. We tried to be very true to the spirit not only of the train but of, uh, of the period and of things that were happening in Europe in different spheres at the time. As much as we could find out this is what the last Journey of the Orient Express in July 1914 was like. It was just simply impossible to find the game to play it. Overall though, if you're an adventurous gamer and want to try something familiar yet vastly different at the same time, then this brilliant genre-defining game may be well up your alley. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.